Hi there, everybody. Peter of England here, bringing you uh, an update on the situation with Weir Bank. Uh, many of you are quite aware at the moment that there has been some turbulence within the, uh, uh, the movement or re-movement and Weir Bank, brought about by people in Weir Bank who don't have its best interests at heart. Now, this action, in my interpretation, is very, very childish, and so I need to address some certain facts that have happened here. The individual who is responsible primarily for this, uh, this schism or split is no more than the head of the IT department, a guy called David Parotti, who his name is actually Parrot, but he calls himself Parotti. So the question is now, who is going to be following this Parrot? Parrots, as you know, are not original thinkers, they are mimics. And from the moment that he joined Weirbank, his work uh, rates were very, very high, but unfortunately, he wasn't always doing the type of work that we'd asked him to do. Um, the situation has boiled up into an ultimatum that was given to him recently, and so what I'd like to do today is just to address how that has come about. So I've made some notes here just so that I stick to the facts here because I want this as factually correct for everyone as it can be. Now, the original suspicions that we had about the, uh, the parrot uh, were brought to our attention last year in 2015. Even in the early days, July and August, what was happening is that we weren't being kept informed on various aspects of the, not only the weekly uh, workings of Weirbank, but also the daily workings. Uh, this led to a member of his own family contacting us and giving us a warning, a very specific warning about, I suppose, the general um, behavior and character traits of the persons that we were dealing with. However, we totally ignored this, giving him the benefit of the doubt and believing this was just, as can happen in many cases, um, just a, a family dispute. However, much to our cost now, or peril, we see now that we should have acted on those warnings then. However, everybody understands that it was a very tightly knit team. Uh, there were three of us working together, and so from the first instance, it was almost impossible to separate out the aspect of the technical side of the website with Weirbank and the actual development of the movement. Now, in most instances, this shouldn't have been a problem. The parrot was brought on for one specific reason, to develop the back end or the back office of the website in a particular way. However, he consistently refused to post things onto the internet that I requested. For example, this is just one. I nearly gave up with many, in fact, I did give up with many, many others the Bank of Ireland rebuttal document. That was handed over in late October, I believe, and it took nearly six weeks for that to be posted onto the website. The other documents, the other documents I'd allowed, uh, wanted to be put into the frequently asked questions section, etc. ad nauseam, I gave up on because if he didn't wish to do it, he wouldn't do it. So ask yourself, how can we or could we work in that scenario? So we had to let it drift. And unfortunately, the drifting involved specific, repeatedly, uh, repeated requests to him that we needed to have the entire database and the website put into a secure area with an independent third party company so that, quote, if anything happened to him, and we were thinking more on the lines of as what we were doing then in July, August, September, if he got arrested, if he had um, a spell in hospital, if he had to attend to domestic issues and members of the family, then in effect what would happen is we would be blind and have no access to the website for any of you. So when people level these accusations that I am looking to take control, that I have some uh, despotic agenda to control, excuse me, I don't even have the login or the passwords for the website. So, when he systematically and consistently refused to allow this um, protection 
for the entire database, which is your information, your knowledge, and belongs to you and all of us, what was there left for me to do? Now, this promoted a degree of lack of communication between us, because what I'd in effect in my heart, even back in October, early November of last year, had in effect given up on him. Now what we'd done is we'd also found out that he had an alternative agenda behind uh, the scenes, and what he was hell-bent on doing with this hub leader and zone leader phenomenon was to take Weirbank into an electronic paygate modality where he was wishing to use things like Stripe, PayPal, Paytronic, and other um, trading devices, which I had specifically said we will not go near to engineer and take Weirbank down the road so that money could be collected by the hub leaders. Now, on the aspect of the hub leadership situation, what I'd inferred and actually stated categorically and produced the document to him was that no hub leader anywhere in the world would be allowed to take up a position unless they first had an interview with me over Skype and it was called the 20 question interview. These uh, factual questions would be presented to them ahead of time and all they had to do is research and understand the ideology, the methodology and the spirit and spiritual and esoteric knowledge behind Removement and Weirbank that I was looking to deliver. Now, that was specifically agreed. There is no question. Did that happen? Have I had a, uh, a Skype interview with Bob Donald, with Frank Alio, with Sharon Poirier, with Larry Telford, with um, uh, Leia, any of these people that have been appointed? So they've all been appointed by Dijon the Talking Parrot, who is a mimic and he's a usurper of the ideology and the function behind this organization. Okay? Now, the next thing is specific instructions were given to the parrot that we didn't want to have any involvement with either Bob Donald or Frank Alleo. Because Frank Alleo, the first time I even saw an email from him, he was asking for money from day one. Now, what's actually prompted this amazing show of loyalty for Mr. Parrot and his talking uh, coterie or menagerie of individuals that are so supposedly going to be following him now. Um, any of you have, have any idea? Okay, so we're banks growing. We're banks growing phenomenally. But every single person that actually joined has to tick a little box which says, I wish to be a member of Removement. Don't forget this. All of you have contractually, under common law, acceded to joining removement. And if you don't realize it, then you should read the contract under common law, which you are implicitly entering into. Now, this joining of removement opens up a very serious point for uh, the miscreants and the mutinous crew that are going with the parrot. Parrot's a technical head. He's got no leadership ability. In order to bring these people on who are in effect controlling him in the background here, what did he have to do? We had a meeting uh, a week ago where we spoke for 14 hours over two days over something that should have been resolved in under a half an hour. And one of the main sticking points is remuneration or remuneration for the hub leaders. The hub leaders he'd, he'd appointed without my knowledge, behind my back, without any tacit agreement between us. He was offering them, let's hear this correctly, 50% of everything. Now, what type of feeding frenzy do you think that that has promoted? They see people joining, they see people coming on board, and there is a greed and a desire on their behalf, and I assure you of this, all of you that are going to be following this talking parrot, yeah, and his crew, that that's what they're turning it into. 
the business model they're turning it into because of the background from which the parrot comes from is the telecoms business. He's turning it into a capitalist, classical telecoms company model with cells, hubs, zones, people who are going to collect money, everything as the old world that we are trying to take We Are Bank and Re-Movement away from represented. So how could I condone it? How could I let it go? Before Christmas, the Christmas rush coming up, I specifically ordered LLT books well in advance. These were delivered well in advance with problems that were uh, initiated in the, the Paroti household, we found out that when we came back on the 4th of January, not only did we not have all the books out to you good people out there, particularly in Germany, but we had a backlog of 600 books. Wow. So, when you look to, say, inefficiency and who isn't doing certain work, these are facts. I'm not making this up. Equally, we were told that these uh, books had been posted out on just after the 4th. We find out then, in fact, they hadn't gone out, and how did we know? We looked at the tracking numbers, and the tracking numbers for, for a product that's supposed to have been going out in the 6th, 7th of January still showed on the 10th or 12th that they were still in the post office, which prompted us to believe they'd only just been delivered. So, this did is to give you some factual background of what we're, we're looking at here. Remember, many, many groups get split. Virtually everything that you can think of gets split. And it's getting split because of discord and greed and egomania. Look at this situation now. Am I responsible for the split in any active way? People might say, yes, because I delivered an ultimatum. The ultimatum was delivered on the back of the unworkable situation by someone who hijacked the back office, taking control of all the data, was refusing to give me access to what I wanted, and the problem was he was building a Tower of Babel for you, which is this structure of this grid of Illuminati influence, which I am assuring you of, that the people of you who are going to follow the parrot and his crew are going to be leaving through a door here and please close the gate behind you because what's behind that door, you have no idea. And the one thing that I've brought to this movement from day one is esoteric knowledge, a spiritual hierarchy that are looking after and protecting us. And anything that's going to get in its way is going to have to accept the karmic consequences of what will be delivered. So, my friends, all of you out there, when you're looking for leadership, look for the person that set it up. If you want to buy Coke, you buy it from Coca-Cola. You don't go and buy a synthetic uh, derivative that comes from the source. And please also be aware, a committee of hub leaders and zone leaders have never led anything anywhere. Committees don't work. Every institution that's ever made any real and meaningful progress in the history of this planet has always come out of the mind of one individual who, unfortunately, as the evolutionary stage on this planet desires or needs at the moment, has to be a leader. And leaders do what they do. They lead. And if they have to make sometimes slightly um, controversial decisions, do they pull away from it? No, they don't. So, the final part here, as far as the ultimatum from this mutinous band and this, this crew that he's put together in the United States and Canada is concerned, they haven't got an idea about common law. There's lots of touting of, well, they've convened this webinar under common law. Where did they get the common law idea from from the very beginning? The Common Law Court of Record 750181, which is printed as the sort code on every check and every LLT, which is mm, my 
idea again and my creation, as is the rune, as is the Weir Bank symbol, as is the Weir Bank, um, everything to do with the furniture and ideology is, is from here. So, when they talk about trying to remove me from my own creation under common law, let's look at the facts, shall we? Common law, a natural law, non-intervention of the state, or no involvement from third parties who are not privy or part to the contract. Have you got that? So, let's look at it like this. Under common law, only intervention and uh, ability to be tried in a court of common law with a duly appointed registrar and recorder in the court. Who was the recorder in the court? Who was the registrar? The point there being three things only invoked in a common law jurisdiction for one. Damage to the person. That means physical damage or harm, not telling him he looks fat or his hair doesn't look good. Secondly, damage to their goods or property, which includes animals. Thirdly, misrepresentation in a contract. No misrepresentation in any contract here because there is no contractual agreement between any of the parties. So, when the instigator, an agent provocateur par excellence, that's French by the way, Bob, um, Bob Donald, comes into the background and starts mouthing off about common law, the individual who fell out with the other rat on the ship, Frank Aleo, when they're talking about Bob Donald appointing himself last year as the national coordinator for the United States. And this was then all a rat fight between them all. And so these are the type of people you're dealing with. These people are going nowhere. They might set up a competitive instrument. They might try and do what we a bank is doing. But please remember, these people have no right and no say. They were not appointed by mutual agreement by the parrot and myself. They therefore have no constitutional or common law or lawful right or involvement or access to anything. They might as well have stopped people at the bus stop or pulled them out of Starbucks coffee shop and said, hey, why don't you come along here and let's convene you with some decisions that don't involve you at all. They're not parties to any contract. They were not interviewed. They were not given. And here's the final point on this, because I'm going to have to stop eventually, is Dijon the parrot, Paroti, this is how duplicitous he was. When he was in our room only a week ago, at the end when he gave us the Judas kiss as he left, we had specifically agreed no 50% to be paid to the hob leaders. We pulled it down to 25%. Sorry, guys. The other part, though, was that what we'd actually said to him is that no hob leader would be allowed into position to be collecting money, Julie Wade, calling yourself, send the money to some outfit or a garage in Arizona or wherever called Spectrum Biz, um, they couldn't because they were sending out literature which had uh, no logos on and no indication that it was coming from us. And on that I said, enough, enough, stop it now. Okay, we agreed that they would not be allowed to collect money to have access to data, to do anything in the name of Weir Bank and Removement, isn't this right, David? Unless we had given them a certificate that they were an appointed facilitator, that they could hang that on their wall or put it in the toilet or wherever they wanted to do it. Plus, they would have to sign an agreement that they were entrusted with the funds and had a duty of obligation to be responsible primarily to the membership. And so, you don't know about that. Has David the Parrot explained all this to you all? No, he hasn't. So, when the fingers get pointed, I've stuck with facts, friends. That's what I've delivered to you. 
I've delivered the leadership to you. We've delivered esoteric knowledge to you. What's caused the piling up of emails? What's caused the backlog of all the administrative work we couldn't do? What's prevented us taking more people on to expand is a simple fact. We had one leg in the, the, on the stool that just wasn't performing. And we couldn't build because everything we were doing, we knew we were self-compromising. We were ultimately going to have to face this day. And the day was brought to you by none other than the person now that you are going to be following over the horizon to somewhere like Never Never Land where they've just got a technical idea copied from We Are Bank and Removement, copied out of here from me, copied from there, and the protection and the direction, I assure you, for any of you who are involved in any esoteric knowledge or um, have any spiritual background, is that they're being influenced by the side that wants to ultimately derail We Are Bank and removement. Look at it very simply, and if you take nothing else away from this, other than this final comment towards the end now, is this. I set up We're Bank. I set up Removement as an ideology with a tool to bring you real and meaningful change. The entire banking system of the world are fully aware of what we're doing, and I brought our system to their attention for you. I have created something called the Bridge Zone, which will allow you with the payment methodology of the RE, and don't forget, it's a unit of currency called the RE. It isn't called the Paroti, it's called the RE. And it's not called the Aleo, or the Larry Telford, or any other. Sorry, Larry, if you change your mind. Um, so, this is what I'm bringing in, and this is what I'm offering. So there is no alternative and nowhere else for them to go. What they are in effect doing is if they're trying to do what all the shills and all the trolls and the government agencies have been trying to do to Peter of England, to Weir Bank and Removement over the last several years is derail me and sabotage me, then doesn't it sort of make a logical conclusion that if they are going up against me and what I stand for, then doesn't that just place them on the side of the global banking cartel, the Zionist moneyed, moneyed, moneyed interests, and the New World Order? Hmm. Yeah, I think it's a very good point. So, for all of you, finally, we're going to take a walk through the door with them have a look what's on the other side before you leave. And apart from that, stick with us now, at last, with the albatross, or is it a parrot, that's round our necks, discarded, we can finally start to move. We have a lot of IT people now willing to join. The funds that have been guarded for you very safely, the promissory notes that are with us, are all now going to be used to take us forward in a very, very strong way. Also, on a sideline there, the people that have got in the way of some moneyed interests that are behind Removement and We Are Bank had better tread very, very carefully because when these interests have found out that their very large, multi-billion potential investments in We Are Bank are being derailed by the kitchen chef and three of his attendees over in America, they weren't very happy to hear it. So, with that, I thank you for paying attention. This is one of the most important um, videos that I've ever done. If you speak German, we will try and get it subtitled or underscored in some way, but pay attention to everything I've said here. It's factual, it's coming from the heart, and it's not based on a monetization and a desire for ego and material gain. It
can't be because it's why I set it up for you. And the sacrifice proves the degree of risk for the heroism. So, thank you very much for listening. Peter of England, signing off.